Hey guys, I'm Daishio, and I'm here bringing you some more magic. Welcome to game two of this match. My opponent leads off with a Centaur's Herald, and I am going to follow that back up with a Rakdos Cackler. And I think that's a pretty good start for me. I mean, can't really get much better than my best two drop on turn two, or my best one drop on turn two. He's basically a two drop. I mean, he's just a two two for one, which is kind of absurd. But I'm going to equip it with the Civic Saber, and I'm just going to beat in. And I figure that there's no way that he's actually going to block because he wants his his uh, Centaur's Herald to um, go explode, explode to make a centaur. I know I talk really goodly. But now I'm going to attack again and I don't remember exactly what happened but um, yeah, he just pops it and uh, makes a centaur which is not exactly what I was expecting I don't think. I think I was probably thinking that he would um, he would play a, he would destroy it before combat so that he could trade with my Rakdos Cackler and I was hoping to have a removal spell for it or something like that. But in the end that's not actually what happened and uh, he actually just blocked and sacked to save some life, and then he can block again next turn to trade. So it was probably a better play on his part. So now he's going to play Rakdos Key Rune, and he's going to tap another two to cast a Rixmonte Guild Mage. So this start is obviously a lot better. He's not dirtling around like he was in the first game. He's actually um, playing good stuff. And yeah. Anyway, I just street spasm away the. Rick's Monty Guild Mage because I'd rather trade my Street Spasm for the Guild Mage than a creature. Although that could be a mistake because, um, well, I mean, there, I, I figured there was little chance that I was actually getting to enough mana where a Street Spasm Overload would be relevant. But he's just going to kill my Rakdos Cackler and then um, my Chainwalker will survive. But yeah, so I mean, I just didn't figure that the. Um, hmm, did I just. I may have, no, I didn't shock myself. Okay. Um, so I was thinking that the overload wasn't really going to be relevant on the street spasm, so it wasn't too bad um, killing it. Or not not killing it, rather, but uh, using it right there. But then he's got another Rick's Mighty Yield Mage for me, and I'm like, oh, okay, that is not exactly what I was expecting. And I mean, I just wanted to save my creatures as opposed to my remove spells. But here I don't really have a choice. I have to attack, and I'm going to, and I'm fine doing it because I've got a spawn of Rick's Mighty in my hand. I think that. This deck would have been a lot sweeter if I had another one, and maybe I would have been able to get match one had I had another um, Spawn of Rick's Monty, just because that thing is so gigantic. It's it's just hard to deal with for your for your opponent. I mean, it's a 6-4, so they need to at least double block it, and if they do, they're going to lose a couple of things. There's there's barely anything in the format that's got 4 power, and I mean, it, can, it trades with like a Cobble Brute, but there's not that many Cobble Brute-like creatures in this format, so... <clears throat> It's definitely pretty sweet, especially if you can get a Civic Saber on it, and it becomes an 8-4, because then it's just going to destroy and decimate and massacre your opponent's entire four. Like, <laughs> I mean, if they don't block it when you have your spawn out, then they are just in bad, bad shape. But he's going to play a Mana Bloom here, and this was actually a pretty confusing play. I thought about it for a while on the best way that he should have done this, and I'm not sure if it was this or if it was a little bit different, but... Um, Anyway, if he had added one more to the Mana Bloom, so if he had tapped that green, then he could have animated his Key Rune here. Um, so I think that might have been the play, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, we're just going to play an Augur Spree here, equip up, and then beat in. And the fact that he wasn't able to animate the Key Rune means that uh, he took a whole bunch of damage, but I'm not sure how relevant that would have been. Um, anyway, I'm going to play into Mage Elemental, and every time I play with this card, I just have fun. The Mage's Elemental, that is. I, I feel like I could have done... I mean, no, I could have... I feel like you could build a sweet deck with Dyna Charges and all, like, Trickeries and stuff like that. I don't know. But it's it's just a really fun deck. So here, there was no way that he could have gone around it. He had to... Um, he, to cast the Karaz Monitor, he just wanted to do it in the best way possible. So now I'm just going to attack with both. He's obviously just going to... Well, actually, yeah, yeah, he had to block because otherwise that would have been game. But I have Dyna Charge, and I can just eat it with my Demagius Elemental. But anyway, what I was trying to say is that I really like playing with Demagius Elemental. Dyna Charge a lot, Trickeries, Cremates, stuff like that could make him a really awesome creature. And if you, if you even get him to a 3-4 pretty early, then he's hard to deal with. But a 5-6, he's just, like, impossible. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and have a wonderful day. Bye.